It's just a video on the guts of a very crappy, extremely cheap, garbage compact fluorescent lamp and considering the state of modern trek and modern fluorescent lamps, uh, that's saying something. Um, saying a lot of something, actually. Um, this is one of these generic um, crap foss for um, dollar store type compact fluorescent lamps, which used to be kind of common, although especially given the price collapse over the past half decade or so in terms of compact fluorescent lamps, <clears throat> they pretty much, at least from what I've seen, disappeared from the market. Um, <clears throat> it's a typical, very cheap uh, ring oscillator topology ballast. Um, one interesting thing about it, did you by the, um, as you can see in the two uh, ripple suppression capacitors there, is that this is actually a potential doubler type rectifier, so that the actual ballast front end is operating on about 300 to 340 volts. Or the or the, or the oscillator circuit is operating on about 300 to 340 volts instead of the um, 150 um, to 170 volts that they're commonly done in 120 volt lamps. <coughs> Um, you do occasionally see that topology in legitimate compact fluorescent lamps, but that's typically only with much higher power ratings, where it's where the ballast is generally some kind of a offline switcher or something, where it needs the um, high potential to drive the um, discharge tube. Because ordinary compact fluorescent lamps, the um, of typical power ratings, say under say say 26 watts and under. Um, well, that's just me kind of talking about my posterior, but based on some tidbits of knowledge. Um, uh, the, the discharge tube only drops a few tens of volts, so it's fairly easy to run the thing on a 120-volt RMS feed ballast without needing a potential doubler. But that, what that's probably indicative of is this is, um, could be, uh, I don't know if this is a kind of thing where it's just uh, multiple types of ballast or... Like multiple revisions of this board, one for 120 volts, one for 240 volts, because I don't see an alternative uh, solder point for the mains connection to be. But with a front a design of this type, it's very easy to just make it so that, depending on how the reg front, on how the um, uh, input uh, rectification is accomplished, it can work on either 120 volts or 240 volts just by configuring the rectifier as either a potential doubler or a uh, a um, just a regular uh, bridge rectifier now there's a pair of um, diodes which are um, on the board or that black mark is a bit of a felt pen that was on the thing when I, when I first opened it up um, but uh those two rectifiers are just wired in a series, but they don't appear to be doing anything. And I see at least one other, there's one other dad, and I think... Oh, there might be a couple others on the board. Um, I don't know, I might be using cheap diodes that aren't good for uh, 400 volts at least. I one in 400. I one in 4,000 sevens, but they could be legitimate ones. Um, cause that, uh, there's a, you can see another diode, but it's the kind of thing where they just, uh, were to tap a wire onto one of those diodes, I think they'd be able to configure it as a, um, as a, uh, just as a, actually no way to tap, I can't remember the topology of a potential double rectifier at the top of my hand, but, might be modifiable to make a 240 volt thing, in which case I wouldn't need to respin the board, but then again, cheap Chinese crap. Um, you'd expect them to take shortcuts like that. And then stuff like those, well again, those two uh, aforementioned caps. There's another, I think it's a 50 volt lytic down there. Don't know exactly what that's doing. It might be some kind of a startup circuit to uh, start the thing. Uh, base drive transformer for the two uh, switch devices, which are mm, I don't know what. Also, by the way, um, these things often have um, 
can hold it, the, the caps on these boards can hold a charge for a long time after the things are disconnected, so I want to be careful poking around on the things. And there. Can't easily read the marking on those transistors, but they're going to be really crappy, really cheap. I was on TO92, so kind of dubious. Um, and one other thing about this ballast is that it stinks. And I mean, olfactorily, not, and it, it isn't the typical overheated electronics. Like, this is a, for comparison, is a, um, a generic uh, Sun Park. Um, this is a generic Sun Park one that I've had for, I think I got this about five years ago. This one does have a more typical hot electronic smell in the ballast, but that's fairly normal to smell in these things when they've been uh, running for a while or actually sometimes even new but it's a fairly typical smell this one it's it's unlike any dead electronic smell I've ever really smelled actually it's a very bad almost kind of a a hint of skunk to it um like a kind of a rotten onion smell um, very unusual, never really smelled anything like it before in terms of burnt electronics. And then there's, uh, of course also this one is fairly typical, again, uh, that's I think the, uh, output transformer, a couple of, uh, about three nanofarad film cap, there's a, uh, 4.7 nanofarad ceramic, um, can't really easily peel this whole thing, this thing out of the way. It's a typical cheap, uh, icy, um, really crappy, uh, electrolytic capacitor. I've occasionally, a oh, little, it's nice little solder blob on that, uh, film cap. Lovely quality controller like that. Um, icy, it's a, you, you typically find really crappy, uh, Chinese obscure brands of electrolytics in these things, um, in some of the more big name ones, you'll occasionally find, like one really big technical consumer products lamp that I gutted, um, that died. It um, it was one of the biggest 68 watt ones, about the biggest you can get at Home Cheapo, and um, bells failed due to a couple of cracked solder joints. Uh, that had Nichikan caps in it, which is somewhat unusual. Um, things like, but some things like General Electric ones, and those also had Aishis, and they're really crappy. Um, as you can see, it's got a bit of a, a, a thermal fuse, or a, a, a fusible resistor. It's kind of hard to see in there, but there's a thing in black heat shrink that you can kind of see right next to the, um, lytic. If I can get something... Eh, the focus is going to crazy. But there you can kind of see the end of it right next to those two, um, fiberglass sleeves, which are just insulation to uh, keep the uh, leads on the, on the lytic from shorting out, because obviously that would short out the, um, DC bus in the thing, which would be bad, lots of smoke and that good. And those are generally not quite as good as proper fuses. And then there's just one last comparison. This is a um, September or October 1992 vintage Osram compact fluorescent lamp. It uh, predates the um, 1993 buyout of um, the lamp division of uh, GTE Corporation or GTE Sylvania as their lamps are marketed. Um, by Osram, and it's the uh, formation of the modern Osram Sylvania. Um, and this is, of course, a much higher quality ballast, but again, it was also American made. This was actually made at the now closed uh, Maybrook, New York lamp plant. But it's got things like common mode choke on the mains input, uh, that glass thing right there, uh, that little tube thingy right there. That's a proper input fuse. It's got a Matsushita uh, electrolytic. Um, nice big T220 uh, package. Uh, transistors. Um, I think that market's uh, uh, a Siemens um, film cap there. There's a Euro style. Um, Plastic box type film caps, uh, some interesting um, clear translucent film cap there. Uh, these extra wires are not factory. This is because I um, when I acquired this lamp, it didn't work because a number of bad solder joints. I actually did a video on that uh, last year, but I mean it's 
I mean, it's all name brand components. It's far better than any crap you find nowadays. So yeah, really nice, good quality lamp that you can't get anymore. And yeah. Oh, by the way, the stench from that thing. I've had this thing open for days, and it still reeks. So yeah, really, really crappy. But and also one last thing about the only complaint I have with this thing is that it uses flat, a paper laminate. PCB material instead of something like FR4, but um, considering that it's effect dis disposable, although really long lasting, it looks to be reasonable paper laminate material. But um, yeah.